Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at VoiceRatings.com. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Hi, how you doing? We're all doing great. I hope uh, everybody's safe where you are in Florida. Sean, gold had, I guess, a correction, a dip. It's hard to describe, but it certainly got our attention yesterday. Is it making a comeback? And if it is making a comeback, will it be sustained? Well, certainly gold's move down on uh, Tuesday was the biggest drop it had seen in seven years. So, yeah, that got a lot of people's attention. And it tried to bounce. Um, not well. And silver tried to bounce as well. They are trying to bounce from support. Um I have a chart that I sent to my subscribers, which I later posted on my Twitter feed, showing support levels for gold. And it's trying to bounce from that first level of support. And so we'll have to see how that goes. I think it's going lower um, because it uh, there's more support around uh, 1878, 1828. These aren't written in stone. I mean, there's some fudge room there. But... Um, I think we're going to see sub-1900 gold, but on the bright side, it's going to be a great buying opportunity. A lot of a lot of hot money rushed into gold and miners in about two weeks. So two weeks where just everything chased into there. Some of that will come out, and so it'll be your opportunity to pick up stocks that you wanted to own, but you didn't buy the first time around. At least that's the way I'm playing it, because the big trend in gold and silver and all the miners, explorers, you name it, is up. We are in a big precious metals bull market. Pullbacks are just part of the equation. And, uh, you know, if, if you're an investor with any kind of longer term time frame, just a pullback is an opportunity to pick up the good things again. Do you think, uh, it was uh, enough of a drop to scare people off or are they still so nervous uh, about the economy and so on? They see precious metals as the only real kind of safe investment. Well, but it's not the only real safe yep. investment. There are other safe investments. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, you know, it it all depends. Um, certainly the hot money that was chasing after. I saw some people say some crazy things last week when I was not buying, by the way. But so, uh, you know, I think that uh, that a pullback will see some of the hot money, some of the weak hands washed out, sure. But they'll be back when things head higher again, which they will. And so this is just our opportunity just to scoop things up on the cheap. Uh, a lot of places are, are now reopening. I'm seeing a lot more traffic on the roads. Does that mean oil will remain stable at least and, and perhaps go up? Well, there's a lot of things going on with oil. I mean, there's still bearish news, like the fact that India's oil demand is down 12% year over year. But against that, you have to balance some more bullish news. I mean, uh, China oil demand is up year over year. Um, Libya has a big blockade at its major oil export uh, port. And so that could drag on for the rest of the year. That would remove a lot of overhang from the market. Maybe not all of it, but a lot of it. We've seen oil trade sideways for quite some time now. I think it's trying to figure out whether it wants to break out or break down. In the short term, anyway, I think it's more likely to break up, you know, um, just uh, because people are really feeling more optimistic about the economy. We had the uh, word from Russia that it's okayed a vaccine for the coronavirus. Uh, they haven't presented any scientific evidence to back this up. People should be aware of that. But if it's marketed as a vaccine, and even if it only works for half the people that actually take it, that'll be something. In the meantime, there are at least three other vaccines that are in the works around the world, in the U.S., Europe, and China. So, 
Um, I think we'll see oil move before we see the actual numbers in the data because of the optimism that will enter the market. So I'm actually turning more optimistic on oil right now. And again, um, and perhaps I didn't make this clear, is that uh, the whole coronavirus thing, that's actually just one of many movers for gold, just as it's one of many movers for oil. It's, 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 it's more important for oil because the pandemic has actually, you know, um, made people afraid to go out, which cuts down on oil demand and, like, all that stuff. But gold has many drivers. The pandemic is just one of them. So um, people shouldn't just be watching that. They should be watching many other things. For uh, for gold, I would watch real interest rates. That's been an important, tremendous driver. And also watch ETF buying, which can also weigh on the downside when the selling starts. For um, crude oil, I would watch the Middle East, which is a powder keg. And uh, we haven't had any seriously bad news out of their geopolitical, geopolitically for quite some time. That just tells me something's due. <laughs> Something will go wrong. Somebody will shoot the wrong thing at, at like, the wrong side. So um, I think the risk in oil is to the upside here. So it hasn't gone anywhere uh, since, uh, what, mid-June? So if you'd had options on oil, you'd be losing money on that big time. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Value from success, growth, and discovery. Golden Arrow Resources is a well-funded gold copper exploration company with proven management and prospective properties in Chile, Argentina, and Paraguay. Golden Arrow trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange, symbol GRG, on Frankfurt, symbol G6A, and the OTCQB, symbol GARWF. For more information, visit us at goldenarrowresources.com or call Sean at 778-686-0135. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the U.S., AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, the NASDAQ continues to charge upwards. Uh, is anything going to slow that down? Well, um, you know, there's all that free money flowing around it has to go somewhere right where it's going to go is into the stock market particularly the big names the big name tech stocks that's when people look for growth personally i would look for growth in the u.s cannabis stocks some of the numbers coming out of those stocks is just just enormous so things look very good so um so um i don't know what will derail big name tech probably something will just like right now for example a lot of stocks that are leveraged to the pandemic are actually being sold right now because people hear this news about the vaccine in Russia. They think, oh, it's over. It's not over. We're going to have months longer on this to actually sort anything out for any real use. I mean, we aren't going to use the Russian vaccine straight off the bat. It's going to be crazy. So um, I I don't know what will derail big name temp. Uh, excuse me. I don't know what will derail big name tech i would say that the way things are heating up between china and the u.s it's turning into a real spitting contest between those two superpowers and uh the the like global trade situation is one arena where they fight that could maybe derail big name tech i'm not sure i don't know how you stop amazon at this point they are seem to be on their path to own everything um Google pretty much the same way. So I'm not sure what actually derails those things, but you have to think they have to some have some kind of reckoning eventually. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. 
Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, anything going on with uranium? Well, uh, just kind of sitting there right now, though, um, both... um Kazakhstan and Cameco had to buy in the spot market because they stopped mining. So we'll see if that moves things around. I've seen uranium stocks go up and down. A couple that I own are actually going up, so I won't complain about that. And, uh, you know, I mean, um, so um, we'll just have to see. People have taken a wait-and-see approach. There are plenty of reasons why uranium should go up, but we've heard that story for, like, years now, right? So I think people are in a show-me kind of mood when it comes to uranium. I don't blame them. Then again, when I look at all the fundamentals, I have to think eventually the price of uranium is going to go higher. Well, you have all these uh, governments around the world, not the U.S. right now, but others saying they want zero emissions or lower emissions. And one of the few things that generates power and doesn't admit anything if it all goes well is uranium. Well... If all goes well, is the thing. <laughs> now, I say this as a guy who likes uranium stocks, and I agree. It's 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 a great story, and I like the new generation of nuclear power plants. I think they're wonderful. That said, many people um, just, you know, they feel very uncomfortable with this thing, at least here in the U.S. And in places like Germany. In fact, I just saw a story about, uh, well, you know that Germany is like phasing out all of its nuclear power plants. There are whole towns that are being leveled and moved out of the way so they can mine the lignite that's underneath them to burn because they don't want to have nuclear power. You know, um, it always seems progress takes two steps forward and one step back. It's really hard to figure out. Um, I am personally long uranium stocks. I have my subscribers long uranium stocks. It would be nice if the market woke up and agreed with me at some point. But on the other hand, you know, there are... Plenty of other things going on, so I'm not going to worry about it that much. Sean, if you had to take a, an overview of the markets right now, what's hot, what's not, and where should you just sit on the sidelines and watch? Well, the broad stock market, I can't speak to Canada, but I can speak about the U.S. The broad stock market is at valuations it's never seen before. I mean, not without a crash. So I can understand why people want to sit on their hands. That said, we have to remember that between now and Election Day, both parties have every incentive in the world to pump things up, to make people feel happier so that they can get reelected. I don't think you want to stand in front of that bulldozer. I certainly wouldn't be short into this. It could go a lot higher. Um, the reckoning, of course, this is just a shot in the dark, could come short, shortly before Election Day because no matter which side you're actually hoping wins, the revelation will come that um, this is a massive beast, this whole debt and government and all this thing, that the two parties, I mean, they can try and push things around, but they really can't control it that much. They're at the whims of, like, circumstances. So I think we'll have a reckoning before Election Day. I could be wrong on that. Maybe this thing will just keep running. I don't know. I know that the... Big banks, the big Wall Street names, they're all planning on a great fourth quarter. They think things will go wonderfully. Maybe they're right. Then again, if everybody's planning on something, that's, op- that's often when it doesn't happen. So, uh, but I think between now and Election Day, things could go higher, right? Because, again, all the politicians have every incentive in the world to make things go higher. So that's the kind of way that I'm playing it. Sean, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks. It's always a pleasure. My guest has been Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. If you have any questions for Sean or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. 
Available online at talkdigitalnetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.